This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries. Welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. We want to um, thank everybody that joined us for that series. We went a whole year uh, teaching on the anointings of Issachar and Esther. And um, those that may not know what I'm talking about, um, you can refer back um, to that series. But that was just to get you ready for where we are today. We want to continue to plow away in the, the principles of the kingdom of God. We preach and teach the kingdom of God. Jesus is Lord, not only in heaven, but also in the earth, whether people acknowledge it or don't acknowledge it. His kingdom is advanced as people begin to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord, and that is the will of God in this earth realm. So tonight we want to start in Psalms chapter 24. Verse one, beginning with verse one, it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He hath Uh, he who hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, the, the King James says unto idols, the New King James says unto idols, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is a generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift him up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. And so the main thing about this scripture is in the beginning, it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And it, it shows how God has every right to claim this earth. And yet he's given it unto the sons of men. And so that's why it gets into that part about lift up your heads or your gates and let the king of glory come in. In other words, God gave this earth to man, but man is supposed to be submitted unto God and not to rebel against the Lord and not to rebel against the Lord's ways. Amen. That for those that are born again, that we are in covenant with the Lord. And the thing about covenant is this, those that are in covenant become one. Amen. Strengths become strengths. Weaknesses become a weakness is, in other words, a person's strength can can gobble up a person's weakness, amen, and to destroy or to get rid of a person's weakness. We are one with the Lord, amen, and so that is that is the revelation. We're in this earth realm, but to truly be in covenant with the Lord, we got to let him come in. We got to yield to the Lord. We have to let the king of glory come in. Because this earth realm is not um, um, openly open, not necessarily open unto the Lord. In, in fact, the earth realm is hostile uh, to the Lord. That's why we preach the gospel, to get rid of the enmity that is in people's minds against the Lord so that they would receive life, so that they would be born again so that their souls may be saved. Amen. So the Lord wants to establish his base upon this earth. And the Lord's base is called Zion. Zion is in heaven, but the Bible says that the church is supposed to be a city set on a hill. Amen. That's Mount Zion is supposed to be in this earth realm. It's supposed to be a beacon of truth and light, amen, to the world so that the world can come to the truth, that they can let go of their wicked ways so that they could repent and let Jesus, allow Jesus to be Lord so that the kingdom of God would be advanced 
in this earth realm, so that Zion would be seen in this earth realm, so that the ways of God, the wisdom of God would be seen in this earth realm. So that's what um, Psalms 24 is. It's all about the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. He's the one that founded it. He's the one that created it. He's the one that established it. He has every right unto this earth. Amen. And yet he has placed us as stewards over this earth. And so we're supposed to give back to the Lord that which is his. We're supposed to be full of thanksgiving unto the Lord and to render unto the Lord that which belongs to him. Everything that we have came from the Lord. The Bible says everything that we have, we received. And if we received it, why do we boast as if we did not receive it? Amen. So it is it is pride that does not acknowledge the Lord. It is, it is arrogance that does not acknowledge the Lord. And the Lord resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. So there's a relationship between heaven and earth that those who are born again should know that we are dependent upon the Lord to reign and to rule. In other words, we reign and rule with the dominion and the authority which comes from the Lord. So we give the glory back unto the Lord. Amen. And so in Romans chapter 12, we're going to continue on this theme. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I beseech you, me, I'm imploring you, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you, I'm asking you strongly that you are to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or worship. Amen. We were made to worship the Lord. And the, one of the ways that we worship the Lord is we present our bodies to him. The Bible says our spirit our bodies belong to the Lord. Our spirits and our bodies belong to the Lord. The soul is the chooser. We are spirit, soul, and body. The soul is the mind, the will, the, the, the intellect. It is, it is the seat of choosing, the seat of knowledge. Amen. And with our soul, we're supposed to choose life by choosing that which is the will of God. Amen. The Bible says, if you be willing and obedient, that you will eat the good of the land. And so it's quite simple for the child of God that you must be born again and your mind must be renewed to the fact that God's ways are right so that you could choose God's ways without any type of hostility toward God, any sort of resentment, any sort of offense, amen, toward the Lord, that, that it would be the, 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 the most natural thing for you to choose what the Lord says is his will. And so you must know and be convinced that God's will is good. It is acceptable and it is perfect, but you would not you would not naturally do that. The Bible says your mind must be renewed so you can prove or prove that the will of God is good, it is acceptable, and that it is perfect. Amen. Because this world has a, 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 another way. Amen. This this world has another narrative. Amen. This world has a, another wisdom, and if you're not careful. The ways of the world will affect you. They will, they will shape your thinking, amen, so that you will not agree with the fullness, with the fullness of God's will. And so you, you must be transformed, amen. That, that word transform is just that. Trans means to change or to go across, amen, to cross over. And form, you must change into another form. In other words, the worldly you will not say that God's will is good. It is perfect. 
it is acceptable, amen, that, that the worldly person will not say that God's will is good, amen, and the fullness of God's will, amen. There's some people that dabble around the edges of the word of God, but there are certain places that they are not willing to go. They're, they're not willing to bow unto, to acknowledge that God is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, that the Holy Spirit is Lord. Amen. And so in essence, you must change. You, you must change into another person to be one with the Lord and to agree with the Lord. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, look, all things have become new and all things are of God. Everything is of God. Nothing is of the world. There is the, the godly way and there is the worldly way. For the child of God, it is supposed to be the godly way, 24-7. And that is supposed to be our joy. We present our bodies, amen, as a worship unto the Lord. Our bodies in this earth realm to do the will of God, to work the works of God, to walk out righteousness, amen, is what our body is for. To give the Lord his honor, his glory, his due, his praise, amen. To be a living testimony unto the Lord that God is good, amen. The testimony of the Lord is that God is good, amen. His mercy endures forever, and he does not acquit sin. He forgives sins, but he does not acquit. He does not say, oh, sin doesn't matter. He will not release the guilty. Amen. But he will forgive. Amen. Those who repent that acknowledge his mercy and his and his goodness. That is that is God's ways. Amen. So you must be changed into the form that operates in the kingdom of God, that knows how to flow in the spirit, that knows how to flow in the kingdom of God. So in Matthew the book of Matthew, chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, beginning with <clears throat> verse 13, it says, Jesus says, therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and you shall not understand and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull and their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears lest they should understand in their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. The King James says that they would be converted. Amen. In other words, that the eyes, the, the eyes doesn't see, the ears doesn't hear. They got physical eyes, but they don't see spiritually. Their ears don't hear. They got physical ears, but their ears don't hear spiritually. And their hearts do not perceive spiritually. That their hearts do not understand God's ways, amen, unless you are converted. So to be born again is not just to accept Jesus as your Lord. Your form changes, amen, and you, and you have to live in accordance to the, the, the dictates that go with the form that you are. In other words, salvation works if you follow God's ways, amen, but, Salvation is fulfilling. Salvation will grant you the joy. You have the joy of your salvation. Things work when you see things the way that God is showing things, when you hear things the way that God intended you to hear, and when you understand the way that you're supposed to understand, that God wants you to understand. And so you must be converted to engage in the, in the kingdom of God. You must be converted. Why? Because you're spirit. You were natural. You, you were associated with the earth. Amen. And now you're born again. You are spirit. Amen. The Bible says God is spirit. 
And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And so your spirit, you present your body as your bodies as a worship unto God while you are in this earth realm, which is a testimony unto God. In other words, though you are in this world and in this earth, you do not eat of that tree. You do not, you do not partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You do not partake of of the flesh. You do not partake of the natural way of thinking. The testimony is that you prove that God's ways are right. Amen. That you operate completely differently than that which is of the world. Amen. Your testimony. You don't, you don't go after the things of the flesh. You don't go after the things that are of the natural. Amen. You crave the things that are of the spirit the things that are of the kingdom of God, the things that are of heaven. Your heart yearns for heaven. And in this earth realm, you do the will of God, which positions you for your rewards in heaven. Amen. You're being positioned for heaven. It's not about works. I'm not saying that you have to work your way to heaven. So don't, don't mistake me. I'm saying that your mindset, your perspective in this earth realm shows whether or not you honor God upon, above this earth, whether you honor heaven above this, this world. Heaven is above. God is above. Jesus is above. His wisdom comes down from above. Everything with the Lord is above. And so the, the example is that light comes down. Light comes down from above. Above, wisdom comes down from above. So you acknowledge that God's ways are right. Amen. The righteousness which is shown in heaven is right. Amen. Amen. This, this world is out of order. The Bible says that you don't murmur. You don't complain. You, you show yourself as a light in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. You must be a light in the midst of darkness. The only way. That you can reflect the light, the truth, is to walk in the will of God, the ways, the ways which are of the Lord. And the only way that you can do that is to be transformed, that to, to think in line with the will of God, to think in line with heaven, that, that you are um, um, in agreement with heaven. Amen. You're not against the Lord. In other words, everything is about kingdoms, what kingdom you are of. And what spirit you are of. Amen. And through your heart and your actions, you have to show that you are one with the Lord and not against the Lord. Amen. Disputes and arguments and disagreements about the word do not come from the Lord, but they come from differing levels of living sacrifice or conversion or transformation, varying levels of whether you have been a living sacrifice. In other words, the only reason that there are disputes about the word is because varying levels of light. Amen. So a person may not have as, as much light. They will argue with a person that has more light. The, the, the person that has not... Um, given themselves, that has not presented their bodies as a living sacrifice, they will argue with the person that has presented their bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. And so they say, I'm just as much as a Christian as you are, but different perspective. Eyes you don't see, ears you don't hear, a heart you do not comprehend because you have not been converted. Amen. You have not been transformed. Formed. The Bible says that we are transformed into the image which is of the Lord. In other words, Jesus is the express image of the Father, and we are made in the image of God. And so there's no other image except that which is which is of the Lord that we're supposed to project and to reflect. The Bible says that with unveiled faces, as in a mirror, beholding the glory of the Lord, that we are transformed into the same image image from glory to glory. People say, what would Jesus do? It's not about a bracelet. It is, it is about letting Jesus be Lord inside of you. Your flesh is under. 
And so Jesus is living a life inside of you. Yes, you have personalities that you have things that are unique to you, but the will of God is the will of God. And so the Holy Spirit is the one who shows you what the will of God is from the word of God. And that is what you do. Amen. Unless this world has you. Uh, Jesus, if Jesus is not fully your Lord, then the world will dictate to you what you will do. Amen. So it's really that simple that you, you argue about things. Amen. You try to nuance things. Amen. But the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of, of your mind. Amen. So your, your mind, your soul must be saved. In other words, your soul must say yes to life. Your soul must say yes to the will of God. You can even speak to your soul. The Bible says, Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. That you can cause your soul to line up with righteousness, to choose righteousness. Amen. And put your body under so that you can do the will of God. If your body is out of control, you will not do the will of the Lord and you will embarrass yourself, amen, and you will have a, a bad testimony unto the Lord if, if your body is not put under. You say, how do you put the body on? How you do everything. They that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, amen. It is the Holy Spirit which is the one that crucifies you or help crucifies you to the flesh and to the world. Amen. So those who conform to this world while claiming a superior level of sophistication or and nuance are that they, they are spiritually weak. Amen. And so that's what people do. They 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 do they conform to the world. Amen. That they try to compromise. They try to, to fit in the worldly way with a godly way. And they say that I know how to operate on a higher level that because they're mixing the world. They say that I'm more sophisticated. I'm more nuanced. I'm not an offense unto people. But Jesus says that the world will hate you because it hated him. You see, we are of him. Amen. That the servant is not greater than his his master. The world will hate you. Amen. And so that's what Jesus said. And so you cannot be friends with the world. You must be the light. You must be unashamedly light, unashamedly truth so that people won't be confused. Amen. That people won't say, well, that person is just as worldly as I am. So that must be the light. So I am okay because that person acts just like me, even worse than me. So I feel pretty good about myself. No, but if you do that, you're, you're not provoking people in love. You're not bringing people to the light. Amen. And so your job is to be uncompromised. Amen. And to know this, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to understand what the will of the Lord is. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord, to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you can understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen. To be filled with the Spirit is just that. The Holy Spirit has control. The Holy Spirit is free to, to come forth, whether it is in, in, in speech, whether it is in song, or, or, or whether it is in the joy which is of the Lord. The Holy Spirit has free reign in your life. If you are filled up, then you're able to bubble over by the Spirit of God, for the Spirit of God to, to move, amen, in you and through you. You give them that place. You say, how do I get there? You yield. The more that you yield, the Holy Spirit is, is free to be Lord, where the Spirit is Lord. The Holy Spirit, he is, the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit is Lord, there is liberty, amen. And so the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is just as much God, and just as much Lord, he is, he is God in this earth. He manifests the Lordship of Jesus and the Lordship of the Father God. He, he testifies of the truth. Amen. What is, what is the truth? Amen. And so you must give yourself to the Holy Spirit. You must not be ashamed of him. 
Amen. Amen. He is he is God. He is Lord. You show how you feel about God by how you feel about the Holy Spirit. Amen. To be quite honest, you show how you feel about God by how you how you feel about those whom the Lord sends. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit is sent and got many of his ministers. They are supposed to be sent ones. And you show how you, your affection for the Lord, you, your yielding unto the Lord, your, your, your ability to be a pliable, amen, compliant unto the Lord uh, by how you respond to the Holy Spirit. Do you allow the Holy Spirit to be Lord? Amen. So turn with me to 1 John chapter 2. Like I said, now that we've finished this series of the anointing of Issachar and Esther, now we are um, preaching more of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, to help prepare you for what is about to come. There is a, a dividing, amen. There is a, there's a separation, amen. Uh, there is a, a river is is divided. It is called a watershed moment. Amen. I preached this before. But the things which are of the Lord has to be the Lord, and the things which are of the world has to be the world. We are Christians in this in this earth realm, those who have accepted Jesus. Amen. And so there is pressure brought to bear that, that what will be seen in the coming days is the wicked is exceedingly wicked. There, there's no such thing as a good witch. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There is no such thing as a good witch. And the Lord hit me to say it like that for a reason. The wicked will, will have to be seen as exceedingly wicked. And the righteous has to be seen as righteous. Amen. Revelation says, let those that are wicked be wicked still. And those that are righteous be righteous still. It's, it's talking about being caught in a moment of judgment. Amen. That whatever state you were is the state that you were found. And so the warning to the, the, the church, amen, the Bible says judgment must first begin in the house of the Lord. Amen. Judgment begins with us first. Why? Because we have the ability to judge ourselves before that impending judgment. Amen. We have a chance to, to turn, to change, to convert. Amen. To turn, to turn unto the Lord. Amen. So in 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse beginning with verse 15, it says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So there's a separation between the love of God and the love for God and the love of the world. And so if you're loving the world, the Bible says, this is the Bible says that the love of the Father is not in you because all that is in the world pertains to lust. Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is, is in the world. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of of God abides forever. So God wants you to be on the side of that which continues forever or the eternal side. And so that, 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 that is a, a spiritual principle that that which is of the world is corruptible, subject to corruption. It passes away. Amen. So everything which is of the world is it passes away. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So you're not down here in this earth realm for no reason. You are actually here to do the will of God. You're, you're not here to do what you want to do. You are here to do the will of, of God. Amen. So the things that people lust after are coming to nothing. 
They cannot survive the shaking, which is of the Lord, and the fire, which is of the Lord. So that, that which people lust after, amen, is coming to nothing. That which people lust after is associated with this world. Amen. And so why do people love the world? It's because of the things that they lust after. What do they lust after? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Amen. And so for the sake of time, I'm not going to get into that, but you know what things people lust after. Amen. They, they are things pertaining to the, the flesh. Amen. And going after the flesh and things that are prideful and things about money and things like that is what people lust after. Those things cannot survive the shaking which is coming, nor the fire of God which is coming. Amen. Because they are in this world, they come to nothing. Amen. And then in 2 Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1, Verse four, it says, about which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. So we see it again, that the, the word of God that we from the beginning, let all these scriptures are connected. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Don't be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So now it says that word, the our promises, that by these promises, we are partakers of the divine nature or the eternal Nature, God's nature, God's nature is good. God's nature is the Godhead. It is oneness with the Lord. And God's nature is that which is incorruptible. It is eternal. But this world is subject to corruption. This world is passing away. Amen. The Bible says the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God abides forever. That which is of the world passes away. It is subject to death. It is subject to corruption. When man sin, amen, death set in. So corruption is that which is of the death cycle. Decay is of the death cycle. And, and that is what this world is bound by. Amen. The things that pertain to death. How do you escape it? You, you have to escape this present evil world. Amen. By partaking of the eternal. Amen. That's the testimony. The testimony is that we partake of that, of the divine nature. Amen. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. Amen. The divine nature. Amen. The God's DNA is in us. That which survives fire. And that which survives the shaking, that which is of the Lord, is who we are of. Amen. 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 And so we show by our, our affection, our love. Amen. Are we tied to that which passes away? Or are we tied to the eternal? Amen. Amen. So by these exceeding great and precious promises, we're partakers of the divine nature, that which survives the shaking, that which is eternal, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So lust is what ties us to corruption or decay or death. So that's why the, the devil comes to tempt people to see if they will be drawn away by their lust. Amen. That's how that that's how death takes place. The Bible says in the book of James that people are enticed and drawn away by their, by their own lust. And that gives place to sin and sin gives place to death. That is the death cycle through lust. Amen. For the things which are of the world. In other words, wanting life without the Lord. That's that's what lust is. <laughs> lust is is desiring life outside of the Lord. I don't care if you say it's good things or bad things. Amen. 
that which is not the will of God, that which is not for you. Amen. Those those desires is what draws you away and connects you to this world. Amen. And so we are supposed to be born again. That means that we are eternal beings. Amen. We are partakers of the Lord. Amen. We are one with the Lord. We are in covenant with the Lord. Amen. So there's two types of people. Amen. That, that word love it is really talking about who are you in covenant with? Who are you with? Are you with the world or are you with the Lord? So those who are covenant with the world, they make friends with the world. And those that are in covenant with God, you are a, a friend of God if you seek God's face. Amen. And, and that you're not afraid to, to seek God face to face, for his face to shine upon you. Amen. That, that you are not unnerved to seek after the presence of the Lord, the heart which is of the Lord. If you are sinful, amen, that you truly don't want that God. You don't want the real God. You want something that will allow you to play around with sin. Amen. But those that love the Lord, they seek his face. Amen. They seek his, his presence. Amen. They want the Lord to shine a light. If there's anything short of the glory of God, they want to know. Because they love the Lord so much, they don't want to bring any junk into the Lord except it would be a sacrifice to be burned up, amen, to be taken away. You don't regard, you don't have affection for, for those things that separate you from the Lord, amen. So two types of people, those that are in covenant with the Lord and those that are covenant with the, with the world. And, and why do I say that? Because there are people that look to the world for their sustenance, and there are people that look to God, amen, who are in covenant with the Lord. But some people, the, the honest truth is that they are in covenant with the world, amen. And you'll find out that whoever you are in covenant with, you will defend, you will fight for, amen. You will be a partaker of that kingdom. Kingdoms are arrayed against each other. Amen. Light is, is an enemy, the sworn enemy of darkness. Amen. That the goodness of God is, is the sworn enemy of, of wickedness and evil. The righteousness of God is the sworn enemy of unrighteousness. The, the, the two, they do not mix. Amen. So you are a kingdom person whether you know it or not. It's just what kingdom you are of. Because you will defend the kingdom that you are of. And your mind will be aligned, amen, with the kingdom you are of. And you will be a partaker of the wisdom of whatever kingdom you are of. Wisdom is justified of her children, amen. So in the book of James, chapter 4, the book of James, chapter 4, beginning with verse 4, it says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So friend is a covenant word. Jesus, says, I call you friend because I tell you what the will of God is, what God is doing. I let you in on what heaven is doing, but you must be trusted. A steward must be found faithful. Do you think that Jesus will reveal his secrets to someone who is an enemy of the kingdom of God, who is against the kingdom of God, that, that uses those secrets against the kingdom of God? Amen. So you must think, you must be converted into the kingdom of God. Amen. So, Friendship with the world is enmity. That means hostility. An enemy who is hostile. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? 
but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So the, the Holy Spirit is jealous within you. God is a jealous God, not like man, who, which may make some mistake and hurt somebody. God has the right. He created you. The Bible says that God made everything for his pleasure. Amen. He has a right to you. So if he sees you bowing down to another God, amen, he is jealous. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, if you're born again and you are filled with the Spirit, amen. So that's the challenge. The challenge is every day, amen, give place to the Spirit. Give place to the Spirit. And, and you will sense his jealousy. Amen. Be begin to, to, to look at something else and let something else uh, try to take your time. And you will feel that the, the stirring of the Holy Spirit, he is jealous. He, he yearns Amen. for in, in jealousy. Amen. The spirit in you, he yearns jealously. Yearns is a deep feeling, a deep emotion, deep calls, calls to deep. Amen. The reason that many are not aware of the Holy Spirit because you have not given place to the Holy Spirit. Amen. You, you, you have not yielded unto his pressings, to his, his, his groanings and his, and his yearning. You have not tried to learn what the Holy Spirit was saying when he moved within you. Amen. The Bible says Jesus was at the graveside of Lazarus. Amen. He knew that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Yet the people were, were speaking death. Amen. There was an atmosphere of death all, all around and loss and death and depression. I'm, I'm speaking to someone who's lost someone. There, there, was an, there was an atmosphere of death. There was an atmosphere of depression. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus was troubled in his spirit. Amen. And people make much that Jesus wept. He did not weep because of any loss. The Bible says he, he already knew. He, when he prayed, he says, Father, I already took care of this. We, we've already prayed, but it's for their sake. I'm even praying this prayer. Amen. He already knew. He, he was troubled in his spirit because of the atmosphere. Of death, when there was an atmosphere of unbelief, Amen. Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration, He comes down, Amen. With Peter, James, and John, the other disciples are there. There's a boy who has a devil that throws him in the water and throws him in the fire, Amen. Jesus says, "How long do I have to put up with you, Amen? How long must I suffer you?" Somebody says, that's a little harsh. No, Jesus was talking about a wicked generation and that his spiritual sons not operating fully in his spirit. He says, this kind comes not out except by fasting and prayer. It was because of your unbelief. Amen. This kind comes out not except by fasting and prayer. The, the, the willingness to, to trade the things which are of the world for the things that are eternal. Amen. 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 Jesus said that, he, he said this, he calls like monies and stuff like that. He says that that is the, the least, amen. If you're not faithful in that which is least. He says, who will give unto you true riches? Somebody says, I thought the, the money was the true riches. That's not what Jesus says. He says, if you're not faithful, if you're not willing to trade off, amen, that which the world honors, amen, how can you position yourself for true riches? Amen. Praise be to God. And so you, you must give yourself to the Holy Spirit. You must be born again. And then according to Mark chapter 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak with new tongues. <laughs> they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall cast out devils. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. Amen. They will speak in new tongues. You, you, when you are filled with the spirit, if you believe. Now, if you just believe salvation, salvation is all that you will get. But if you believe the word of God, 
Those that believe will speak with new tongues, which is a sign that you were filled, amen, with the Holy Spirit. That, that in the book of Acts chapter 2, chapter 4, chapter 10, amen, that they were filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. If you argue with that, remember what I said. People who argue <laughs> the word of God are coming at it from a different level. Amen. A, a, a different level of transformation. Amen. You, you know that if you were filled with the Holy Spirit, you, you would turn into another man. Amen. The, especially if you gave yourself to it. Anyone who's watched this ministry, Christ be glorified, me and my wife, amen, our children, amen, you would understand that we purpose to give ourselves to the Holy Spirit, that, that we do not care, man, what somebody thinks. We want the Holy Spirit to, to have his day so that Jesus can be Lord, amen. And so you must give yourself to the things of the Holy Spirit to be transformed into another man, amen. If the world who knew you before you were saved still knows you the same after you are saved, amen, you have not changed, you have not transformed, you have not converted, amen. Now you must learn the ways of the kingdom for there are certain ways associated with the kingdom of God, amen. And so everyone, you have a heavenly assignment, amen. You're supposed to honor heaven above the earth. You're supposed to honor Jesus, the Father God and the Holy Spirit above the spirit which is of the world. This is how you're supposed to conduct yourself, amen, while you are in this earth realm. In Luke chapter 19, the book of Luke chapter 19, For the sake of time, we'll just read verse 12 and 13. Jesus is telling us a parable. He says, therefore, he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. So he called his 10 servants and delivered unto them 10 minus or 10 pounds and said to them, occupy till I come. Amen. So a, 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 a nobleman went to a far country. Far country represents heaven. And so the Lord went to heaven. He delivered 10 pounds or he gave them. There was 10 servants. He gave each one of them a pound. And you know the parable, the, the one he increased his to 10, one increased his to five, one hit his, amen. And he said it was because that his nobleman that he was a harsh, he was a harsh ruler, that, that he gathered where he did not scatter, amen, and that he reaped where he did not sow. So he did not know the master, amen. So God gives, amen, everything that we have, the Bible says, is given unto us. Everything that we have, we receive, amen. So we are stewards of what the Lord has given us. God gave us the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The Bible says that heaven is God's throne. The earth is his footstool. Heaven belongs to God. The earth he gave it to the sons of men, the children of men. So it belongs to God. So don't get it twisted. The, the earth belongs to God. He leased it, amen. All those parables about leasing a vineyard and, and leasing things, it is, it is talking about how that the Lord committed the earth to men to give him his fruit, his harvest. What is his harvest? Righteousness. Amen. So heaven is right. Think of it that way. Heaven is righteous. Heaven is shines with the brightness of Jesus. Amen. He wants that same righteousness and that same light in this earth realm, which would produce souls being saved, which, which would produce lifestyles and behavior that lines up with righteousness. So that's what the Lord wants. And so far country is heaven, gives the earth, 
He, and he commits things to people's hands. Amen. Nothing that you have, the Bible says, that you did not receive. First Corinthians 4, 7. Anything you have, you received. And if you received it, why do you act like you did not receive it? Amen. So everything you have, you received. That's, that's a truth. Amen. And so it actually belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. Amen. So Jesus says that you are supposed to occupy until he comes. Occupy means to gain by trading. Amen. To gain by trading. What do you trade? You trade the things that are corruptible for the things that are not corruptible. And in so doing, you show that you regard the Lord above the things that are of the world. I'm going to say it again. What do you trade? How do you get gain? Amen. The Bible says, don't store for yourself treasures upon this earth where thieves break in, where there's moths and rust, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where the moths and the dust and the rust they don't happen where thieves cannot break through and steal. Amen. So in this earth realm, you show what side you are on by who you honor. Amen. That's right. Whether you honor mammon, the world, or whether you honor the Lord Jesus. Amen. So Jesus is, is the focal, focal point of honor. If you honor Jesus, you honor the Father. If you don't honor Jesus, you don't. You don't honor the Father. Amen. So it is, it is, if you honor Jesus, you honor the Father. If you don't honor Jesus, you don't honor the Father. And so your, your behavior in this earth realm, amen, who you respond to, amen, who is over you, amen, who do you um, give to, who do you esteem? The Bible says, uh, we set, saw it in Psalms 24. The person who has not lifted up their soul to an idol may ascend unto the hill of the Lord. The person that has not lifted up their soul to vanity, to an idol. Vanity, an idol, represents this earth realm, this world, and your soul is what you choose with. Amen. So if you lift up, that means pride. Living in this earth realm as this earth realm or mammon is your Lord. Amen. And so we trade. I'm going to list some things that we trade. We trade the glory of this world for, for the glory of God. You remember the devil, the devil tempted Jesus and he showed him the kingdoms of the world and the glory thereof. And so Jesus did not uh, yield to that temptation. Amen. The glory of this world. Amen. So you trade the glory. Everything. What's the glory of this world? The money is the main thing. Money is the main thing that is considered the glory of this world. The, that which is of value. Glory is the, 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 the heaviness of the Lord, the kabod of the Lord. Amen. It, it is that which is the splendor of God. It's when God comes, his glory comes and he brings his name and everything that is associated with royalty. Amen. So glory is associated with value and that which is of esteem. Amen. So you trade the glory of this world for the glory of God. You trade the a perishable life for eternal life. Amen. You give the Lord your life, you get born again. You trade a worldly status, esteem and acclaim for a place with the Lord. Amen. And, and that is a little bit, a little bit deeper than what you think. You, you trade your place in this world for a place with the Lord. Amen. And so, um, this may be the last scripture in St. John, chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. St. John, chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. Jesus says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself 
that where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place. Most people say he's talking about heaven. That word place means an abode for you. That, that what I'm trying to get you to see, that what you do in this life prepares you for your heavenly life. And so the place that God, that the Lord Jesus has for you in heaven is in accordance to the place that he has for you down here. It's, it's like uh, the, the parables where the servants were, were faithful over monies and things like that. He says, you've been faithful over a little bit. I'm going to put you over 10 cities. Amen. That The person that gained five, he says, you've been faithful over a little bit. Well done, good and faithful servant. I'm going to put you over five cities. So your place, this, this is what um, a lot of people are not teaching the, 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 the believers. What you do down here prepares you for what you will do up there. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place. So you have an abode, a spiritual place here that the Lord gives you here. You have a sphere, you have a metron, you have an abode with the Lord. Amen. It is in accordance to receiving it and what you do with that place down here. That place is where you are supposed to dwell, where you're supposed to live, where you're supposed to abide in him. Amen. And if you take that place, if you prefer that place over the place that the world will try to give you, then your place will be great in heaven. Amen. Amen. Your authority down here, if you use your authority down here for the will of God, your authority will be great in heaven. Amen. And so I'm, I'm trying to transition you. I'm, I'm trying to get you to transition from being an earth dweller to be an, a heaven dweller, amen. That when, if you learn to operate down here, amen, if you learn to operate in the presence of the Lord, amen, down here, it will prepare you for his presence up there, amen. amen. And so it's all about the trade-off, amen. You, you can't get there unless you're willing to trade. Amen. You cannot get there unless you are willing to trade what the earth calls value. Amen. To receive the value which is of the Lord. So Father God, we thank you for that word. Father God, that we began to plow. And Father God, that we pray that your people would have understanding. Amen. That I'm not talking about works. I'm talking about living in the place which is prepared. Amen. That we are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. That, Lord, that you have prepared that we should walk in those good works that you prepared ahead of time. That, that pathway, that place, that abode in you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Of uh, Father God, teach us, amen, that Jesus is above all worth, amen. So when we begin to compare things and to evaluate, when we compare it to Jesus, we choose Jesus every time and we choose his ways every time. And anything short of it, if, if there's anything in us which is keeping us from choosing that, that high road, amen, even that narrow road, Road, Lord God, remove it, Lord God. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to comprehend. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.